Hello, this is a uh, demonstration of the next version of my tile editor, which I'm now actually calling a world builder. Uh, the previous v versions of this that I demonstrated on YouTube were very basic as far as just allowing you to create tile maps, and really that's it, tile maps and some collision and basic stuff. And after it was put into practice, I noticed there were some severe shortcomings that really didn't work out in a game environment. So, after a bunch of work, this is the next iteration of this. It is now called uh, Paradigm 2D World Builder. I'm not going to go through the old features that were shown in the old videos. Um, if you're interested, you can watch them. Uh, they're still here, but it doesn't, doesn't really matter. So, how I'm going to do this is basically I'm going to throw together a test map so you, you can see the new features I've added to this. Uh, just as before, I'm going to load a tile texture uh, this time we're going to be using a texture from RPG Maker. Uh, right now I'm using the engine and editor to basically create an RPG with a team of uh, students at my college. And this is uh, what I'm using to basically test out with before our artists come up with assets. So as you can see, the tiles are all loaded here in the tile selection area. What I'm going to do here is a tile layer fill. Uh, again, that the editor supports multiple layers. The old version only supported three. Uh, this version actually supports unlimited layering, uh, which isn't actually necessary anymore, but I figured there would probably be a circumstance where I'd need it, so I added it just in case. So, we'll do a layer fill of grass, and there, a uh, bunch of grass. Now, before, on the older versions, I would basically select a new layer and draw tile regions if I wanted to place trees and such. Now well, that works out nice, but really occlu occlusion and things like that get really difficult, especially with player objects and NPC objects, because these are really just being drawn on a layer, and you'd need to fit in all of these entities into the layers and constantly sort it out, and really it's, it's more work than it's worth. So honestly, we don't do it that way anymore. What I did is I basically included a sort of entity system that supports loading entities and spawn points and creating them dynamically to load into an actual game engine. So if I go to my Manage Entities menu here, these are some of the entities I'm using uh, in the test game right now. So instead of drawing a tile region for trees, I'd actually select a tree entity. Uh, it'll load it up and display it over here in uh, an XNA preview pane. And instead of doing a tile draw, I can actually do an entity draw and place the trees however I want them. Notice that they're all doing a sort of virtual Z buffering here. This way there's proper occlusion. And this is exactly how it works out in the actual game as well. So that when these entities are loaded, uh, objects can buffer behind them and they occlude properly and it looks really nice. Uh, what's nice about this too is a new version allows me to zoom in and out so I can get a better view of the entire map which is really helpful. So, that's one of the major improvements. Another one of the big time improvements we did in here was uh, the inclusion of a very basic particle system. Uh, particles look nice, everybody likes them, they're all the rage of basically all games now, uh, and you really can't get away with making a game without some sort of particle system. So, even with a kind of retro sort of game style that this, this editor lets you make, it's nice to kind of have that sort of next-gen thing happening. So what I'm going to do to kind of show you that is I'm just going to do a quick tile draw of a campfire. And I can manage my particles here. And these are some of the particles that I've uh, already done here. We have a small flame particle, a very large flame particle. And basically these can be edited so you can basically have uh, dynamically created particle emitters. As you can see the torch one it's pretty, pretty basic stuff. It goes up, goes out a little bit, and is relatively small, and it works really nice when placed on the map here. So I can draw a particle emitter here. Boom, particle emitter. As you can see, that's rendering real time in the map. Same type of situation here. I'd probably, if this was a real map, I'd make this impassable. And just by selecting a collision brush, I can make any of these tiles impassable. And it doesn't really matter that there's objects here, because the objects themselves 
don't have any collision information. The map contains the collision information. So when objects are walking, NPCs, players, what have you, will basically collide with whatever tiles are marked as collidable. Another addition to this is animated tiles that are done very similar to the way objects are done. But this way, the map itself and the rendering engine can handle all this so the game doesn't even have to think about it. They're created pretty much the same way as everything else. As you can see, basically just load an image here, tell it how many frames, tell it the time between frames. It's simple, animated tile. Same type of situation, I'd select a brush for animated tile draw. And we have, you know, a very rudimentary, obviously, water source. The animations don't just work for tiles as well. The actual objects that I mentioned earlier can be animated as well. I do have some mani some animated entities here, for example. And forgive the terrible art here. It's basically a test. But as you can see, windmill. Again, even the animation and everything is occluding properly and it all sorts out the way it needs to be. It's a much simpler way to create a map this way. Additionally, you can edit the IDs that are unique to each one of these entities, and this basically goes into uh, a different system for the games I've been working on for scripting. This way, stored in the map are IDs for any single uh, any of these entities. That way, they can be directly referenced via the script system and be controlled or spawned or despawned or changed or whatever. And the same other situations uh, or features that existed in the other versions are still here. You can draw portals to other maps. You basically just create them and draw them as, as rectangles. So for example, this would be to, I don't know, test map. We'd give it an identifier in the left side, out the right side, add a portal. And portal draw. Select our portal here. And we have a portal draw. As an example of one of the finished test maps I've been working on, I'll quickly load a map here. You can see loading's decently quick, four and a half seconds to load a new map because it has to load all the entities, all the particle systems and everything. Here we have you know spawn point right here marked with a simple marker for the avatar spawn point. We have a tent object with a portal that allows you to go inside. We have a particle emitter, lots of trees, collision mapping, and portals on the left and right hand sides. This uh, editor basically is a huge step forward from the other one as it makes it much faster to create maps, especially when not having to worry about tile layers. Really, most of these maps can be created with a single tile layer just for the uh, the ground. And then, r if you wanted, you can throw a second layer on there for doodads, you know, flowers, grass, that kind of thing. But really, it's pretty, uh, you don't really need to do it anymore, which is great because doing 13, 14 layers to get trees on there uh, is really a big giant pain. And then, programming that to occlude with objects is even worse. And honestly, going for an object-based approach really just is a much better methodology in my in my mind. And that's pretty much it. This is how the editor looks right now. Um, my other videos show uh, this map that you're looking at right now in action. Uh, there is a a video of uh, pre-alpha for our game, A World Apart, that is showing the player on this map moving around. Literally this map, uh, obviously what you see is what you get. Uh, literally the map renders exactly the same within the editor as it does within the game itself. And that is it. I hope you all liked uh, the demonstration here. I look forward to improving upon it and posting more about it in the future.